looked at some of the techniques that are going to make you successful in 2015 beyond the basics. And there are really three things. There's integration, there's personalization, and there's adaptation. You've heard some of these messages before from other speakers. So integration, it's all about linking social media with email. So a really simple example, for the last 18 months, my number one source of leads for email marketing has been Facebook advertising. Believe it or not, I've tested and a picture of me actually works better than not a picture of me on a Facebook ad. I couldn't believe it. I tested it three or four times amazingly, except in Europe. It works in North America, it works in Australia, it works in the UK, but in Europe, they don't want to see a picture of me. Who'd have thought it? <laughs> when you look at the data, when you look at the facts, in fact, nothing could be further from the truth. Email marketing is actually undergoing a bit of a renaissance. If you actually ask people what their preferred channel for receiving business communications is, then the number one media, the number one channel across all age ranges that people say is email. And it just doesn't just win by a little. It wins by an order of magnitude. Depending on the age range, between three to seven times as many people say they prefer to receive business communications via email than any other method. When data analytics firm Costora published the results of their four-year study into the online buying patterns of 72 million customers across 14 different industries a little while ago, they showed that over 40 times as many purchases came from links in emails as came from links in social media. That's 4-0, 40 times as many purchases. Now, I don't know about you, but when I want to know what's really working in terms of marketing, what I do is I go and look at what the smart marketers are actually doing for their own business. So rather cheekily, earlier this personalization. week, personalization. If you personalize your emails, and by personalization, by the way, I don't mean, you know, dear so-and-so, including their first name. Whenever there's a research report comes out, it says personalization gets you better results, gets you more opens and clicks and more sales. Some idiot then writes that, oh, we have to then say dear first name in all our emails and our subject lines. That's not what it means. What it means is you adjust your content based on the preferences of your subscribers. How do you find out what their preferences are? Lots of different methods. Here's a simple one. And this is Andrew Warner of Mixergy, great business site full of interviews, some free, some paid, with really successful business people. One of the things he experiments with, you might go tomorrow and it won't be there, but sometimes when you go, when you sign up, instead of a normal sign up form, you'll just get a, a little question that says, what do you want from me? Do you want to learn how to start a business, get traffic to my site, generate um, revenue, or be more productive? Whichever one you fill in there, five minutes later, you get a welcome email from him over there, and it says, hey, you told me you want to ha get help growing sales. Here's my most appropriate interview that you can learn from. Now, there's not some fantastic artificially intelligent algorithm behind that. There's only five choices. All it does is it tags them and it sends one of five emails depending on what you sign up for. But it really works because you're getting the content that you're interested in. Now, personally, I wouldn't get people to sign up with a survey. It um, lowers response rates by and large. I would get people to sign up and then send them a survey, then tag them based on what they've filled in, send them the appropriate content. One of the biggest enemies for any form of marketing, particularly email marketing, is averages. So typically, if you're emailing a sales campaign, for example, if you're doing a product launch and you think, well, some of the people on my list would like this, some won't, what I'll do is I'll email once a week because I don't want to upset the people who are not interested in it, but I do want to offer it to the people who are interested. The problem with that is you're not emailing enough to the people who are interested, you're emailing too much to the people who aren't interested. You're kind of hitting the worst of both worlds. If you segment your list, if you based on what people's interests and preferences are, you can email less to the people who aren't interested, you can email more to the people who are interested, and therefore you get more sales, and you get happier subscribers and customers. This has been Email Reinvented. If you've enjoyed what you've heard, I've been Ian Brody. If you haven't enjoyed what you've heard, I've been Chris Brogan. Um, <laughs> you can... No, I really am Ian Brody. I really am Ian Brody. Um, you can get a whole bunch of free stuff on my website at ianbrody.com. You can get a whole video training course and best practices on email marketing at emailpersuasion.com.